Hi everyone, thanks for watching our talk. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the common challenges made by student editors and um, some of the ways that we help them avoid these problems. I'm Ian Ramchon. I've been a Wikipedian since 2004, and I've been working as a Wikipedia expert at Wiki Education since 2014. Hello everyone, my name is Brianda Felix. Um, my Wikipedia journey has been a bit unique because I first edited Wikipedia as a college student in the Wiki Education program in 2013. Um, I was an editor for that quarter and then didn't really edit until I was reintroduced to Wiki Education in September 2022 when I became a Wikipedia expert. So just a little bit about Wiki Education and where we're coming from. Since 2000. 10, the program has supported 120,000 student editors who make uh, contributions to Wikipedia as part of class assignments. Uh, we support about 6,000 students a uh, term. And we've, so this is just to say that we've supported an awful lot of students and we've seen just about every mistake a new editor can make. Yeah. So I'll start us off on the um, common challenges that uh, first-time editors make. So the first two that I'll cover are reference formatting and quality of sources. So if we take a look here, um, you can see the arrows pointing to different kinds of um, uh, errors in for reference formatting, right? Uh, many times, first-time editors sometimes use URLs as references without providing any additional information, right? Or sometimes they'll use the link that they get through uh, library proxy servers, which don't take you to the, the, right, the piece of information directly. Um, and so those kind of uh, reference links can are actually pretty useless, right, for a reader that's trying to find out more information. Um, and then in certain cases, they just skip the site tool completely and manually input these, re these references, right? So um, in addressing these, these, this specific challenge, right? I think it presents a good opportunity to have a conversation with the student, right? About verif verifiability um, and why it's so important, right? That the reader has as much information about the sources themselves so that the reader can then access these sources and check the facts, right? Um, in our case, as Wikipedia experts working with students, um, this and specifically college students, right? This provides a really great opportunity to discuss, right? The unique position that they're in uh, with access to um, paywalled information and just like their uh, campus libraries and such where they can get that information, right? And then share it with the global community. Um, so I think it's really important to connect um, these ideas, uh, which then kind of serve as motivation to the students to, um, fix these references or um, add more information, right? Once they understand how important it is to have that kind of, uh, or th to have that access of information available um, on Wikipedia for their contributions and for the readers, right? Um, so that's reference and reference formatting. Um, and then when it comes to quality of sources, um, I see this a lot where uh, critical media literacy, literacy doesn't seem to be something that a lot of our first time editors are trained in, right? Or have really learned about in their education studies. Um, so oftentimes this is the first time that uh, they're faced with the task of critically evaluating sources, right? Um, sources of information. Um, and so many of the editors don't know really where to begin when they're evaluating these sources, right? They don't know what questions to ask. So I always find that talking to these editors, right? Um, engaging in discussion, right? Uh, literally asking them, right? The questions that they should be thinking about. Like, for example, if you look at this, um, the screenshot below, right? Asking the kind of questions like, what kind of podcast is this? Does it have an editorial team or is it one person that's behind the project, right? If they're using a magazine, like is this magazine known for fact checking or is it an opinion piece, right? Um, is it uh, an opinion piece or is it neutrally written editorial contribution, right? How easy can you find the about me page so we know 
what's going on behind this, right? This this project, be it a magazine, newspaper, whatever. Um, so usually at the end of that exercise, students get an idea of the kind of questions they're supposed to be asking when evaluating sources, you know? And um, in my experience speaking to instructors and such, right, they've said um, annotated bibliographies, right? Which is where you would be asking these questions and where students would be going through the process of critically evaluating their sources, right? Annotated bibliographies usually aren't done until about grad school. So um, it's this, I find that this, um, this exercise of finding quality sources to support their contributions tends to be a very um, prominent uh, challenge that they, they face as they're writing up their work. Yeah. Um, and then, the next three that um, I found to be very important or common challenges that uh, really affect the any contributions to Wikipedia are these three that usually go hand in hand when you're um, when you're looking at first time editors work right so those three are essay like right es essay like issues um, tone issues and then unsourced statements right so in this I chose this example to share with y'all because it really encompasses all three, right? Um, so students uh, or first time editors, right, will be, are accustomed to writing persuasive, persuasive essays. Um, and so when we ask them to write neutral fact-based um, contributions, they kind of don't have, right, past experience to go off of. Um, and so this is one of the areas where they really get um, like stuck on is like, well, like, what are you asking me to do, you know? And so, um, for example, right, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, situations where the student will uh, start off there or they'll add this header where they're asking a question, right? Why temples were created? <laughs> you know, and then, uh, which is typical of a college research paper, right, but it's not what we're looking for in a Wikipedia article, um, or then, right, uh, when you address tone, you'll see, you'll find examples, for example, this underlying sentence where, that starts off as, everyone believes, right, making these um, over, right, grand statements, um, and then, of course, the favorite or their not favorite uh, error of Wikipedians is that they don't provide a single source for whatever it is they wrote, right? So we have no idea what to check. Um, and so in addressing these, um, these errors, I feel like what I find myself telling a lot of student editors um, to address like all three of these is I ask them to... Um, to cite, right? This is where uh, I asked them to cite each sentence. I'm like, look over your text that you added or that you're drafting. And I asked them to cite each sentence, right? If you are able to trace um, the information that you have in each text to a reliable source, then you're gonna be good, right? If you can't find the information that you wrote, right, in that reliable source, then it shouldn't be on Wikipedia kind of thing. So, um, I think it's a lot more work for them to add a citation to each sentence, but at least it helps them um, see what can stay and what is fluff or original research. And I think um, they're off better um, doing that extra work rather than not providing any, <laughs> any citations to um, their text. So, and um, that exercise I feel addresses uh, all three of these common challenges because then they're able to see like does my source say that everyone believed in that that the gods controlled the sun and water if it doesn't then they probably have to rewrite their work you know um and so that's that's the that's the exercise that I like to use to address these these common challenges so getting a little further into the weeds um one of the hard parts about learning to edit collaboratively, which is something that's going to be new for just about every new Wikipedia contributor, is how you communicate with, with other editors. So sometimes um, we tell students, sign your comments, so they stick a, a signature in the middle of 
the text they've added to an article. We tell, uh, or they include a note because footnotes really are almost are fairly inaccessible to to new um, Wikipedia and uh, Wikipedia editors. Or they add a comment in. Um, I added this here. I want this to one of their collaborators to communicate with them or something like that. And so the challenge here is where do you communicate with your other editors? How do you follow up? And obviously that's what the talk page is for, but talk pages tend to be difficult to find and a little bit unintuitive to people who aren't familiar with Wikipedia. With Wikipedia. Well, at the same time, if you've been a Wikipedian for a while, talk pages are so completely natural that you forget that everybody doesn't know about this. Um, so it's important as part of the overall uh, orientation program to Wikipedia to explain to people where they need to communicate, what the talk page is for, that they should check the talk page, and um, all these sort of aspects of communication and not to stick their comments or communication uh, attempts in the article text. A lot of new editors create new articles. In the student program, we try to direct a lot of, of participants towards existing articles, but there are missing articles, there are gaps to fill um, especially when you're talking about things like the gender gap. And a lot of new editors are creating brand new articles. And where are you, where are you doing this? Very often it's in your sandbox. If you create a new article in your sandbox and try to move it to main space, you're faced with a very unintuitive interface where you have to specify namespace, you have to name the article, but the default that fits in there is your username slash the name of your sandbox, lots of stuff like that. So new editors, students and non-students often uh, will take a sandbox and send it on a wild goose chase through user space, Wikipedia namespace, and all over the, all over the place. As somebody who's supporting new students, Obviously, the, the first place to try and get this is up front with your training materials. And um, I'd like to, to plug a pro uh, upcoming um, video that Brianda has been working on to, uh, to do this, to explain how to do this in video. But if you're monitoring, you need a way to follow up with what they're doing. And in the English Wikipedia, there is a feed where if you go to recent changes, you can filter by new users moving out of user space. If you're supporting new editors, watch list this feed, create a link somewhere and keep this handy. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is manual of style edits. Whether it's something like uh, sticking a reference before um, before punctuation, or the terrible crime of using title capitalization in a section header instead of sentence capitalization, or sticking a set of weird references off, off at the end and creating a pile of site errors, manual of style er um, errors are very common for for new editors. And it serves, it's sort of a, a double-edged sword. On one hand, this is a good way for a new page patroller or a recent changes patroller to recognize work that's been done by a new editor. And you know, this is sort of a sign saying, take a closer look at this because there are likely to be errors here. The downside of this is human nature being what it is, people will take a look at it and find the edit, find the errors, whether they're there or not. So if you can 
help new editors um, avoid a lot of these problems. They're, they're more likely to, to sort of not be um, immediately like reverted by somebody who's looking at far too much, um, who's trying to, you know, deal with the flood of recent changes or something like that. So getting people to fix, to, to abide by at least the basics of the manual style is a fairly good way to, to train new editors to avoid the um, dispiriting experience of having your whole contribution removed because, you know, you put a piece of, you put punctuation in the wrong spot. <laughs> um, finally, I'd like to say that while we focused on a lot of errors, New editors and student editors in particular who have gone through a process of training, who get the support that we give them, often do remarkably great work. I am continually um, really impressed by what they do. So, you know, not to harp too much on the negatives, but these are some of the common errors that we find and that other people run into. So thanks for uh joining us on this talk and if you have any questions feel free to email us uh you can see our emails are up on the presentation and we'll happily answer them thanks so thanks <laughs>